About 10 years ago, my family had a studio rental business in a big city. Our studio had the most thorough security system at that time. So, as a result, our studio became the best place for those parents who ever wanted to send their daughter from the rural area to the city. Even though the rent price was highly expensive, our studio was always traded, and because of that, the gender ratio of women was far higher. At that time, there was a woman who had moved into our studio for about three months. She was the kind of annoying type that she requested changing the automatic door locks password several times a month. There was a manual in the room that helps you to change the password for oneself, but she kept asking us to do it every time, saying that it was complicated. We felt like she was the type who was going to fuss about our studio someday, so we always did her favor whenever she asked. But one day, she started saying something strange. She said that someone seemed to be coming inside of her room when she wasn't there. Of course, we have a master card to enter every room, but I swear... We are not those ignorant types of owners who come in and go out of any room, except for sometimes when people who leave their rooms without telling us they had changed the password, or when we had to do an electrical inspection for the empty rooms, asking for prior consent already. But she seemed to doubt me, because I was the one who guarded the studio during my university vacation. Anyway, my parents sent her back to her room kindly, saying that she might be mistaken at first. Then the other day she came up angrily this time. She said that she put a piece of paper in the crack of the door and folded the edge of the bed's blanket slightly when she went out. However, when she came back again, then she found that the paper was fallen on the ground and the blanket was all spread out. Cursing me tremendously, she had already believed 100% that I was certainly the criminal. At the time, I was ordering food and in a good mood after cleaning the roof in a heavy sweat. And this woman's behavior slowly pissed me off. And even my parents seemed to be suspicious of me at this point. But I couldn't confirm what was happening on each floor because there was only one CCTV in the front door and another one in the parking lot at that time. No matter how I felt the unfairness, I couldn't just install all the CCTV using a huge sum of money to capture the evidence of the woman who has such a megalomania and mythlomania. So I put a digital camera that had very low resolution at that time in a beverage box and put it in a hallway where she was living. I had to go down every two hours and empty the memory. And I finally ended up thinking that I wouldn't be able to do this anymore after about three days. On the fourth day, the incident happened. That day, the police knocked on our door first. Following them, when I looked inside the woman's room, I could see the pearl-like eyeshadow was spread on every side of the walls. It turned out that the woman had coated the doorknob with cosmetics when she went down to her hometown for a few days, hoping the criminal to leave a trace when he broke into her room. But as if he were mocking her, the criminal had put those pearl shadows all over the walls, ceilings, and even floors of the room. So the police came to my room after receiving the woman's report. They started to investigate whether they could find any traces of pearl shadow on my keyboard, mouse, drawer handle, faucet, and even the toilet watering lever. But it was nonsense. I was just eating delivery food without knowing anything. The wash basin in the woman's room, which had been empty for four days, was completely wet as if someone had just finished taking a shower and I could see the soap was expanded. I was eventually called to the police station as a witness for questioning. When I finally got back home, I brought my camera that I had installed before to see what was on it, just in case. And then, something strange was caught in the camera. On the second night around 11 p.m., the woman's boyfriend was filmed entering that empty room. He wasn't in the video for the third day, and of course I couldn't film it for the fourth day. It was a suspicious thing. In the end, I went to the police station again with my camera and submitted it. The whole story of the incident that was revealed later was like this. It was her boyfriend who made her terrorized and tremble in an attempt to bring her into his studio. While she went to college, he kept sneaking into her room and left those suspicious traces for a month. 
Then as his girlfriend noticed the strangeness, she told him what had happened and he kept telling her about the cruel and scary murdering cases that occurred in a studio apartment. Later, he suggested to her that she could sleep in his house if she was scared. His final goal was cohabitating with the woman, and the climax happened on that day. After hearing that she had set up a trap at the door, he entered her room and rubbed the pearl shadows on the whole room more than she did. Of course, the sink, the blanket, and the paper between the doors, everything was all by him. He thought that if his girlfriend felt extreme fear, she would end up living with him. What was even more creepy was that when the police came to our studio that day, he was comforting his girlfriend calmly, hugging her in his arms. The more she got afraid, the more courteously that bastard consoled her and kept thinking about how he could make her scared on the other hand. In the end, the man was accused by the woman and her family, and the woman took time off from school due to the huge shock. There's something I want to confess about, so I'm going to write it down on this anonymous site. I'd like to talk about one thing I really, really did wrong. When I was in elementary school, I had to ride my bike to school because there was some distance from my house to my school. My house was located in a back alley. And one day on my way home, I was riding my bike around the curve and I couldn't slow down. So I ran over an old lady. She collapsed, passing out, and I rushed back to my house being terrified. She was a very kind person in my town. She was close to my family and people in the neighborhood, so she always greeted me kindly whenever she saw me. Back then, the CCTVs weren't installed around on the streets, so no matter what happened in the alley, there was no way to find out who did it. And the next day, a handwritten poster was attached to the alley wall. We're finding a witness. My grandmother had an accident. We don't want to believe it, but if the criminal is one of our neighbors, please confess. We don't want strong punishment either. We just want to resolve the injustice. It was written something like this. She returned home shortly after being treated for a concussion, and after that, her health began to deteriorate rapidly because she was quite an old lady. I was afraid that I'd be revealed that I did it, but she didn't seem to remember the incident, or was she just pretending that she couldn't remember? Anyway, she was always spending time in the same place enjoying the wind or the sun, and I had to avoid that place where she was. I shouldn't say it like this, but fortunately, I wasn't caught. As time went by, my guilt gradually became dull, and I was living without much thought of it. When I was in high school, she had dementia, and one other day I was passing by the alley and I met the old lady again. I greeted her unconsciously. I'm not sure if she had a clear mind or not, but anyway... She smiled at me and said, like this, Oh, hello, so you don't ride your bike anymore? The cold sweat soaked my back in a brief moment. Without answering, I just ran away, and time passed. The old lady passed away after I became an adult, and there's still the guilt in the corner of my heart. Since I can't tell this story to anyone, I hope you guys understand me using the power of anonymity to write it here. I know. I'm just the most terrible trash in the world. Okay. <laughs>